Hickok 45. You know, we're fortunate to have so many cool little pocket guns these days, aren't we? And we have a relatively new one that just uh, has not been out all that long from Beretta. We're going to shoot today and talk about, and we appreciate them sending it to us for T&E. Why don't we just take a shot? Mr. Cowboy, you're next. <laughs> Empty. It's a six plus one little pistol, yes. Beretta Pico, and uh, smaller than the Nano, right? Nano, then even smaller, Pico, some kind of unit of measurement, uh, as I understand. And this little gun is little. It is thin, it is slim. That is its claim to fame. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not as thick as even the LCP, which we have out here for comparison. Now, most of you are familiar with the LCP and the uh, a P380 from car and these are all, all clear uh, This firearm is actually thinner than they are. Let me show you. I was surprised. I went in and pulled this thing out of the safe and and That's thickness on it and Look at that. Look at the additional space there uh, Yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't know you could get much thinner than that than the uh, LCP it is a little gun Now let's see. I don't think I actually tested that now on the car, it's a, uh, it's a little, it's about like the LCP, maybe just a tad thicker. You know, there's, those are hardly any difference, but this thing is thin, and that is a claim to fame. Uh, little six shot, uh, 380, and you may not have ever seen it or held it. Uh, you need to hold it and see how it feels to you because that is a strange feel. Partly because you have a high bore axis, it's a uh, hammer fired gun. Okay, it's truly a hammer fired. Uh, revolver you have second strike ability revolver pistol you have a uh, second strike uh, capability there it, it's uh you're doing everything every time you pull the trigger it doesn't half cock when you when it fires and the slide retracts and it's half cocked and it gets lighter none, none of that stuff like you see in some some pistols it's a full pull length pull and cocking the hammer every time all right so uh, yeah, it's uh, I think it was introduced at NRA convention in about 2013, maybe. And it's been a little bit off my radar. I wasn't that familiar with it until recently. But uh, it is very small. It is uh, again, it's ultra thin. You almost don't know you have it. Let it down there. It's all stainless steel and polymer. A 380. It's rated for plus P, as I understand. So it, it's it's made well. You'd expect that from Beretta, wouldn't you? Again, we welcome Beretta to. Tennessee. I always have to mention that in Beretta video. We're glad to have them here. And it's in the Nashville area. Pretty cool, huh? We're also glad to have some ammo. Uh, back to the gun. Now, you might have seen my Facebook posting uh, on this gun, the picture of it, and I made the comment there that, uh, and you should be checking Facebook, you know, and, and the Hickok 45 uh, and Southern Channel and all that. Now, make sure you're doing that. But on Facebook, I mentioned that you'll either love this gun or you'll hate it. You'll love it because it seems well made. And so far, it's been reliable. Been shooting it for a few days here, and it just it, it has fed everything up to this point. And uh, you know, it's Beretta. A Beretta has been making guns for let's see, I think it's been a couple of decades, right? Oh no, wait a minute, a couple of centuries. No, wait a minute, 500 years. Is that right? So I, I don't know if they've been working on this particular model that long. Probably not. But uh, they make good guns. We all know that. They might make something that uh, the feel of it's not ideal, you know, like 92 uh, F and 92. You know, the 92 gets, it gets a lot of love and then it gets hate. You know, so whatever it is, uh, it's probably made pretty well, whether you like the feel of it or not or caliber and all that sort of thing. Now, this gun is different. It's definitely because the smaller you get, as I have pointed out many times to you, and I hope you've been listening and taking notes, the smaller a firearm is, you know, then they're generally carry guns when they get down this small, aren't they? I don't think you'd have this for a range gun or a nightstand gun, probably. They're better choices, right? These firearms, and really all of these, when you get down to this size, it's, it's, it's engineers sitting around a table deciding what can we do to make this thing as small as we possibly can. I mean, as small as we possibly can and still fire a real cartridge you know, at least 380 and be reliable and work and be accurate, have decent sights on it maybe even. 
and fit in a pocket, you know. So that's a challenge. It really is. If it's just a range gun, it's just a big old Glock or a big old M&P that you're just going to go shoot a, a house gun or whatever, it, you know, it's easier to do that, okay, because that much difference in thickness or uh, on, uh, 10 ounces, you know, don't necessarily make a big difference. So with these, it does. And this gun, it, it feels awkward to me, I will tell you that. Uh, that's one of the negatives. It feels very awkward, and it's, it's kind of awkward to work the slide. Now, it's a trade-off. They, they were about making this thing as thin as they possibly could. Look at that. When you put the calibers on that, like on most guns, you've got the slide lock that's a lot thicker than the slide. You know, protrudes, you know, even on a Glock or something, which is pretty uh, much a minimalist gun, you know, you have, it's, it protrudes a little bit. This thing, it just doesn't change. Look at it, it is that thick everywhere, <laughs> or that thin, I should say. So that is pretty amazing. So consequently, your, your slide lock there, it's a little difficult to get to in a hurry. You would not want to have a hang up uh, in the middle of a gunfight with this thing. It, it would just, uh, to clear it and get the slide worked and everything. You, John and I were just talking before the video. What I would do is I would throw it and run, okay? Or go for my second or third or fourth gun that I usually have on me. But I, I wouldn't be messing with it too much if I didn't have a lot of time, all right? But now uh, on the positive side, it has good sights. And the trigger actually feels good to me. Now in the hand, it's a little, uh, it's got a high bore axis and there's not much to get a hold of. You know, you talk about two fingers gun. Some people don't like having a firearm. They can just get two fingers on. This is a one finger gun, at least with a flush magazine. It's a one finger gun. It really is. And when you pick it up like that, you feel like it's just gonna fall out of your hand. I, you really, I do. Now I've got big hands. So you, know, you gotta consider that bias. Uh, well, it's not a bias. It's just a biological limitation, right? It's like my mental limitations. But you're, I'm, I'm controlling with one finger, by and large. Now that said, and when I picked it up the first time, I thought, I would never be able to shoot this or hit anything with it. And, but the trigger pull, even though it's kind of stiff, it, it's very consistent and fairly smooth, and I like it. I feel like a revolver on the hammer. That hammer, I would like to have on some other small guns, you know, like the LCP, maybe even the, the car. I like to put trigger pull on the thing. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Well, let's shoot it a little bit more, okay? Well, well, could shoot it a lot, but it's, it's just, there's my other magazine. Yeah, I've got one loaded. Now, you also get this magazine. Now, don't laugh. Have you seen this yet? How's that? The cute? I'll load the other magazine. Now, that's an extension, isn't it? I love that extension, because you know I love extensions on magazines, right? <laughs> Well, actually, I don't, generally speaking, at all. Of course, if you put that magazine in it, uh, however you're carrying it, that probably is going to uh, eliminate that method of carry, you know, unless it's in a holster. I don't know. Maybe that, I guess that fit in the pocket, but it definitely extends a lot of, uh, puts a lot of length on it. Uh, and I don't know, you know, John, I don't think it really helps that much when you, when you pick it up to shoot it, you still want to, you want to grasp it right there, you know, as high as you can. And uh, down there, I don't know if that helps. I really don't. So now let me get around it. That's that's tough. Okay, you got your your magazine release right there. I think part of the reason they have that kind of that uh, European style there on the trigger guard or whatever you want to call it is behind the trigger guard is uh, maybe if they had it right here. This is so thin that you'd probably activate the uh, the, the mag release. Okay, so let me pull that out. And uh, let's see, what did I decide was the best way to do it? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and lock it back. It's, it's difficult to get a handle on it. It really is. And the serrations are not that sharp. And it's very thin. And it's a very strong spring. And I discovered putting that back in and then releasing is the best way to do that. Okay? So I got both mags loaded. All right. Certain awkwardness about it, as you see. I'm trying not to exaggerate it. But you really, uh, once you, you definitely wouldn't want to carry this, this pistol without a round in the chamber, I don't think. Because you, know, you might fumble around a while getting one in the chamber. All right, if uh, you had an emergency. Well, okay, let's take a shot here. I don't know if I can hit too much with it. Let's try that pot. Okay, well, I put a hole in it, just didn't break it. <laughs> there we go. All right, send him off. <laughs> you hit that guy. And I really probably cannot hit those uh, without shooting a lot at those two liters down there. I'll try one though. 
wasn't too far off, I could tell. Pull down, I've discovered for me the best way to uh, extract a magazine is not try to push down with my thumb at, or even my trigger finger, is just grab it like that. It just works better for me. All right. All right, I'll try a couple more shots at it. Let's try the big one on the left. I'm gonna try for the middle of that uh, tombstone. Okay. Like I said, uh, I'm surprised I hit those, but you know why I did it is uh, other than the fact I'm a genius. Uh, <laughs> the reason I was able to hit those was extreme concentration. But it, uh, as I was saying before, it's, oh man, I need to get the magazine out. It's, it's stiff. Part of it, maybe it's new and still stiff, but part of it, or the reason I was able to, is even though you don't feel like you have a very good grip on it at all, but what makes up for that a little bit is, or a fair amount, I guess, is the trigger. I mean, I, I really like that trigger. It's just, you could pull that right on through without moving the gun. Uh, unlike the LCP, I want to pull it low left, or a lot of little guns, you want to, yeah, they're just hard to shoot well. These are, these are almost, uh, as, as uh, I didn't make this up, but you'll read a lot of people who know a lot about firearms more than I do will tell you these are guns for a professional almost. They're a, they're a pro's gun. They're someone who really knows and has a lot of experience shooting these really little guns. Uh, that's why, as I've advised before, you don't, don't take someone into a gun shop, help them pick a gun. They're new to firearms, just going to get a carry permit or just got it. And maybe they're small of stature and and they want a little gun and you pick out any of these three guns. I, I don't think they're a great first firearm at all. They're hard to shoot. They're hard to shoot well. Yeah, they're a gun and you've got a gun, but man, they're just not easy. Okay, so uh, th these little bitty guns are really for someone, I think, with a lot of experience. But uh, again, when you pick this gun up, many of you, you're gonna hate that grip. You, I mean, there's just no way around that. You're gonna hate it. Uh, again, on the positive side of that, you will be surprised, though, if you fire it, that you can actually hit something because you can still pull that trigger right on through, okay, and keep it on target. I would, uh, if I were going to keep this firearm and buy it, I would, it's a and e gun, like I say, I would, uh, a Talon grips uh, will, will probably have some grips for it. Uh, I would uh, put a strip of something. I didn't want to do it for the video. I wanted it to be realistic, you know, what it is. But, uh, like, I've got some old ones on that, that LCP. That, that, that thing stays in the safe. It's an older one. They've improved the LCP. It has a much better trigger these days. So I, I'm not going to have to ever carry that probably. I've still got the old sandpaper talon grips on it. I would, uh, I would cut a strip of that or of the rubber and put it around there for now. And it would be a lot easier to shoot and a lot easier to hold, no doubt about it. Because it's slippery. On top of not having much to grab, it's slippery. I don't know why they couldn't do something with that. But anyway, trigger saves you a little bit. Let's shoot a little bit more. Okay, uh, the sights are good. You can see the three-dot sights. I mean, it has really good sights. It might have the best sights of any of these little guns like that. Okay, It's the thinnest. It's got great sights. It's a Beretta. Uh, what else? Oh, let me show you how it breaks down. Pretty simple. Not hard to find a wrench for it. You just uh, that little screw on the side. You just turn that, and uh, I actually kind of like that. You know, it's your typical. You know, you pull this out. I was gonna burrow. You know, it seems to be well made. It's uh, it should be. It's made by Beretta. And uh, other thing I didn't point out, I guess, is the chassis. It's like the Nano. You got your seal number on the chassis, and so you can uh, take a pin out. I think it's uh, I didn't I haven't done that yet. I read about it. I guess it's that pin. Take it out. And you pull the chassis out, and that's the gun. That's the serial numbered part. And so I, I don't know if they have them available yet, but you'll have uh, like a pink uh, grip frame, uh, you know, which you might want. Or maybe even different contours, I'm not sure. You know, there's several uh, companies, I think SIG does that, and, uh, and uh, Beretta has done that on at least a couple of firearms, and that, that might be the wave of the future. That's pretty cool if you have a chassis that is the actual firearm trigger mechanism, I guess, you know, as part of that. 
and then you can really, if you want a bigger grip or a smaller grip, a different contour, it gives a lot of flexibility there. So that might be the coming thing down the road in the firearms industry. I can see the a lot of uh, uh, sense behind that. So it seems to be well made. You just bring it back up there and then the screw automatically writes itself. So it actually breaks down pretty easily. That's a little different than most fire. I, I like that. It's easier than some of these little firearms. There we go. There's another positive. <laughs> I'm putting the positive column column because I, I know I'm being mean on, on some issues here with this firearm. Uh, some of the pins, yeah, they've seen me struggle with the bodyguard and some of the others, which I shouldn't really struggle. Other people don't struggle necessarily. But some of those pins are kind of difficult and tricky to get in and out, I will say. All right. So let's uh, load these magazines. And we've got to find out whether it's gong worthy, don't we? Okay. Let's, well, let's go ahead while it's dirty and fire a couple of uh, holler points. Okay. Since it is a defensive firearm. I don't think it's an offensive firearm, is it? Is it an assault pistol? Don't think so. Could be used that way though. Just like a hammer or a saw. And I'll put some, uh, these are blazer. I'll put them in this other magazine. Just to shoot some different ammo here in it. Like I say, we've not had a malfunction yet. I've shot it uh, over several days. I've cleaned it two or three times. Uh, you know, so could be today though. You never know what's going to happen. Let's, let's try the uh, get a little dirtier with this uh, blazer. Uh, I realize. See, again, this is a gun you have to get ready to go before you leave the house. Make sure you got a round in the chamber. All right. Boy, it's hard to get a hold of. All right, blazer. Well, let's just go for the gong with one of these. Yep, we had our first hang up. Uh, what well, do you know, blazer? Okay, now that's going to be a challenge probably to get clear. Get that magazine out. Ah, there we go. Oh, boy, that's tough. Now, I have shot some of the blazer and it didn't do that. Uh, did it that time, though, didn't it? Uh, all right. Wow. And of course, some guys don't like blazer. Just thought I'd try it. Got him. Couldn't tell that time. Okay. Let's try the hollow points out there. Now, this is what you really want the chamber. You're going to carry it and to function with. Got him. <laughs> I don't know. I think he wants at least. I don't know. Okay, so they, they cycle okay. Which again is more important than the uh, uh, than Blazer. I haven't had any trouble with the, the American Eagle uh, at all. In fact, that was the one malfunction right there. You, you witnessed it. You were here for it. Okay. Uh, what else about it? Uh, I like the trigger, like I say, I like the trigger. I love the sights. Uh, I like the thinness of it. If I had a little more to get a hold of, I'd uh, I'd be uh, more favorable toward it. It's uh, and depending on your grip and your hands and how you uh, think a gun feels, you just need to feel this gun. You know, it's obviously uh, made well. So it just comes down to how it feels to you. Are these little, little firearms. As usual, is again, beware getting a firearm too small if, uh, if you don't have a need for one that small. Right? If you've got a need for a really small firearm, and uh, John and I were going to start the video with this thing in my shirt pocket, and uh, I kind of thought better of it, you know, catch all the safety sally. Well, we'll do it anyway here, John. We don't care. Uh, everybody see it's unloaded? Okay, uh, anybody see any rounds in there? Okay, now, I'm not a magician. I can't load this gun quickly or magically. I'll pull the hammer. Okay, I think it's empty. All right, now, there's something we can do in live video. Now I'm gonna stick it in my pocket. Okay, 
it doesn't the magazine, but it doesn't really matter. That flat. So, I mean, you could have that thing in your pocket. If it's in a shirt pocket, I'll even turn it up. We know there's nothing in it. Let it go off over my shoulder. If it, I don't like to aim it up myself, of course. But, uh, now you wouldn't carry it that way. But just a demonstration, you know, we had thought about doing that to start the video. And, like, we lost the gun. Where'd the gun go and everything? But it's better if we do it this way. You can see for yourself, it's, it's really unloaded. It's not just supposedly unloaded, right? But it's just a really small, thin piece of hardware just that simple so that's one of the big advantages of it all right who needs to be shot here that hadn't been shot oh there i did there it went again this is just not your average firearm and in its defense i'll say uh, i love the car pm9 and that little one there the p3 you got to be careful loading that first round on those guns too it'll just hang up on you it's weird you know, when you jack the first round in but yet that's the only time it does that. They're really, really reliable. So you know, these little guns can be a little quirky. Now it's loaded. We're not going to put it in my shirt pocket. Okay. Let's try a little one-handed uh, at something. Try the cowboy. those plates Misty. okay that's more shootable than you would think okay I wouldn't want to attend an ipsic match with it or anything but it is more shootable than it looks uh, why don't I just try uh, what might fall if I hit? Let's try that turkey on the top row. At least you can see how, how far off I am in the leaves, maybe. I'm going to try to get close to it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of all around. It's not a long-range gun, no doubt about it. But it's more shootable than it appears. That's, the, I guess, the bottom line. Uh, I think the and again that magazine extension uh, doesn't really help me much. I would just carry it with the, the flush magazine and take. I mean, if you're going if you're going for small, go for small. If I'm going to have a firearm that's that long, I'll just get me a gun with a real grip. Okay. So the advantages, uh, the thinness of it, uh, really good sights. The fact that it's made by Beretta, it's all stainless and uh, and polymer. And uh, it seems reliable. We had one hang up with Blazer, but you know that's the only hang up we've had with it. Uh, you'd want to shoot it a lot, break it in before you you carried it if uh, this was uh, your choice. Uh, I love the trigger. I don't like the grip. I don't like the high bore axis. It's it's just way too high for that small a grip for me, and it's thin, very very small. If you have small hands, this this gun might feel you know decent to you, pretty good to you, I guess. Uh, to me, it doesn't. Uh, negative would be, again, in these uh, sharper serrations uh, in order to manipulate that. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a masterpiece in how they got it so thin and even the slide lock and everything. So it's, it's a work of art in that regard. It uh, really is. So pick one up and, and feel it. And if you're looking for a little gun like this, and again, I would advise you not to be looking for a gun this small and thin unless you're, you've done a fair amount of shooting. And if you have, you can pick it up and determine whether this is something you would want or not, whether you can probably shoot it or not, if it's in the ballpark at least. Nice, nice, nice trigger. I like that. Okay, anyway, that's kind of my take on it, the positives, the negatives, and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, Beretta sending it to us uh, to put through the paces and see what we think about it. The really little gun. It's tough to make a really, really, really little gun that's easy to shoot. I've got a North American Arms Derringer y'all keep asking me to bring out and we're gonna do that one day. Uh, it's a really cool little gun, really well made, but it's just so small, I, I just barely can shoot it. That's one of the we haven't done a video with it. So the smaller you get, the harder they are to shoot well. They're much easier to carry, you know, and they're really cool looking, but you need to, uh, to be practiced and accomplished and, uh, know whether or not it's something you can actually handle you know uh, something that's this small and thin so anyway pick it up sometime you might love it and uh your hand might not be as big as mine right glad you came out today life is good